ministry and healing ministry. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. What an awesome anointing in this house. I feel like the, the atmosphere is charged with the power of God. Amen. God is doing amazing things all over the world, including New England. Amen. New England is in God's agenda. A few years ago, God spoke to me about the region of New England. God said, I'm going to reopen the wells, the ancient wells. I'm going to reopen the ancient wells. And you know, the ancient wells are all over New England. Circuit riders, great preachers came through New England and preached the gospel and dug some amazing wells. New England has a lot of history, prophetic and revival history. And so God is about to reopen those wells again. Amen. Even in the midst of a pandemic, God is moving. Tell your neighbor God is moving. Blessings from uh, my family, my wife, uh, Rebecca. She's back in Orlando where we are based. And we have two daughters. Uh, their names are Kariel and Celeste. Kariel is eight years old and Celeste is three and so uh, we're blessed uh, and uh, very happy to be serving the Lord with our family. And uh, my wife uh, wanted to be here, but it wasn't possible this time around. But I'm sure next time she will be here. This is one of her top destination. Uh, like, she wants to come here so bad. This is one of her dream destinations. So, New England, I mean, her parents actually came here a few years ago when we lived in Dallas uh, they they spend like two weeks driving through New England, and uh, they they actually live in Australia. Uh, my wife is originally from Perth, Western Australia, so uh, her parents were visiting us in Dallas, and they flew up here. They flew to Boston. They ran out a car, and they just drove drove all the way up the coast, and so they loved it. And um and I was like, well, one day I'm going to make it up there. And then I met Matt and Amy and. Uh, it was a divine connection. That was my first time in New England. <laughs> that was a year ago, and then I went back this year. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been a wonderful kingdom connection. I've been in ministry since the age of 11. I was known as the boy preacher. Um, the Lord has uh, given me kind of a, an international background. So let me put it this way. Uh, originally from Costa Rica, U.S. citizen, uh, Australian resident, and kingdom citizen. So you got a, a whole package there. But uh, I have, uh, I've been all over the place, f almost 51 nations. Um, we just got back from Malawi, and uh, we saw an incredible move of God in Malawi. And we were a part of the GNE collaborative uh, Outreach, we did uh, some crusades with the G&E and the Luis Palau Evangelistic Ministry. And we saw close to 12,000 people come to those meetings in Molenja, uh, which is about an hour away from uh, Blantyre. And we saw 600 people come to the Lord. So that was awesome. We were part of three other crusades. They had other crusades and all up. I think they had like 60,000 and like uh, like 12,000 decisions for Christ all throughout their tour. But I was one of the evangelists that partnered with them, uh, with all their evangelists that came from other parts of the world. And so it was awesome to see that. Because this is the time where we need to join hands and work as one body in Christ. Amen? So my testimony just in a, in a, in a short capsule. The Lord called me. At the age of 11, it was a supernatural calling, and I will share some of those highlights with you. But I was healed of a deadly tumor between my lungs and my heart. And then I was given a healing ministry at the age of 11. I prayed for someone at an evangelistic outreach. This lady had a, a bone cancer, and she had, a, I mean, she had a really bad, it was, it was already all, all throughout her body. She came to the to this valley and she looked like she was more dead than alive you know what I'm saying she looked really sick 
And the Lord just asked me to lay hands on her, and I prayed for her. And two weeks later, she came back with a cancer-free medical report. She was totally healed. So that started a journey of, of praying for the sick and seeing amazing miracles all throughout uh, our ministry journey, um, you know, serving the Lord uh, close to 23 years. It's just been amazing, amazing stuff that the Lord has done. Uh, our ministry, recently we were based on the other side of the world, and that was last year. I, I went to Australia for a short period of time, and then the lockdown happened. And then we came back, and now we are back in, in, in Orlando, where we were orig originally based there. So the Lord has been good, and He's going to do amazing things this weekend. I believe it. I feel it in my spirit. There's a sense of expectation. Tell your neighbor with a big smile, God is going to surprise you. He is going to surprise you, man. We had some amazing meetings last weekend in uh, Waupun, Wisconsin. Now, if you're familiar with Wisconsin, that's about an hour from Milwaukee. And uh, they have uh, three large jails in this little town. So most of like 70% of the people that live there work for the jail system. And so, but a lot of people actually drive three hours to come to church. This is like a refreshing uh, place where people come from all over Wisconsin to be part of these meetings and the meetings I'm not kidding you the meetings went on for three four hours the worship was incredible it was off the charts it was like heavenly it was amazing I mean tonight was incredible too I mean I'm telling you when you have this kind of worship and this kind of encounter this kind of breakthrough meeting don't take it for granted because a lot of churches don't do what you guys are doing a lot of churches only have 15 minutes for the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit better move quickly. Hello. A lot of churches only have prayer time after everything is done and dusted, and they have some elders standing there, and nobody responds to the prayer altars because most times there is no leading, there is no anointing, there is no, you know what I'm saying? It's more like automated, and the Holy Spirit is not into franchise. The power is unique. The power is authentic. And you may like your franchise restaurant, but the Holy Spirit is not going to turn the anointing into a franchise. You know what I'm saying? The, the Holy Spirit is not into formulas. The Holy Spirit is into relationship. He wants to build relationship with His people. And that's going to take time. And I have, news, I have news for you. You're going to be worshiping, not for two hours or 90 minutes or 60 minutes in heaven. You're going to be worshiping for all eternity. Come on. So if you're looking at your clock wondering what in the world is going on, well, my question is, what are you going to be doing in heaven? Because heaven is going to be a place saturated with the presence of God. The presence of God. Amen. So I was healed at the age of eight of this deadly cancer. I was given a prophetic word before going to see um, the doctor. And the, and the Lord spoke to, to me. It was a personal word. And I actually went to a meeting, a meeting like this. And, and uh, the, the pastor prophesied. And he said, your testimony is going to be known around the world. See, when God speaks, he's sometimes talking about your future. Sometimes he will talk about your present too. Because God, you know, he lives outside of time. Amen? So, so he didn't know what was going on. This pastor didn't know what was going on. And he prophesied and he said, you're going to be healed. And your testimony will be known around the world. And it was like a, a word of knowledge. You know? So I went back home and I told my mom, I said, you don't need to take me to the doctor. I'm healed already. It's done. It's a done deal. I had so much faith, and I still have faith, but you know, as a child, I'm like, I'm done. I'm healed. There's no need for me to go and see a doctor. And she woke me up the next morning. She's like, no, we got to go, and we need to, you know, have a, the confirmation. And, you know, so I was praying, and I was believing God. Even uh, believing before that test, I was fasting, and I just knew God was going to heal me. I knew I had been given a lot of prophetic words. 
You know what? The enemy is the father of all lies. But Jesus is our healer. Come on, somebody. Celebrate Jesus tonight. <laughs> Celebrate Jesus tonight. So, I went to see the doctor. He was a, a Catholic fellow, and he had a big crucifix around his neck. And I saw that immediately. I noticed that because... When I was a little boy, I used to go to my grandmother's house, and she had a lot of idols. She was a really strong Catholic, heavy-duty Catholic. And I used to count all the idols around the house. And at the end of the visit, I was kind of, you know, it was not a polite thing, but I would do it anyway. I was, you know, I had that prophetic character. And I would tell my mom, we have 20-something idols in this house. She was like, shush, shush. You know, your grandmother likes to have these statues in the house. She was a strong Catholic. She had a lot of statues. I mean, a lot of idols. So the first thing I noticed when I went into this doctor's office is all these statues of Virgin Mary from different parts of the world. And I'm like shocked. I'm looking at all these statues and counting them. You know, that's the first thing I do. I start counting, you know. And I was about to say something, and then I just felt a squeeze, you know. Don't you dare. And then the doctor began to say, you know, what we are seeing here is, is so unusual. I, I went through Alejandro's medical files, and I can see that he was diagnosed with a rare tumor between his lungs and his heart. And, uh, you know, I was only given one year. And uh, the only option was laser surgery, but back then it was very expensive. It was without reach I mean there was no way to do it for our family and so and it was only done in Miami at, at that point it was, this is not early 1990s you know they were developing this technology and anyway um, they said uh, the doctor said I'm looking at the at the x-ray we just took and uh, I'm I'm He's, he's basically, he's, I'm shocked. I don't know what, what, what to make out of this. I mean, either we made a mistake. You know, sometimes doctors try to justify, especially if they don't believe in miracles, right? We, either we made a mistake or something happened because I'm looking at this new x-ray. In fact, I'm going to show it to you. And then he pointed at the area. He's like, there, there, there is no shadow. There is no area. There is no trace of cancer. There is nothing. It's like the tumor is gone. Now, I don't know what you guys did, but the tumor is gone, so there will be no need to. I mean, we can follow up, and I'm going to give you a, an appointment in six months, so we will follow up. And they kept following it up, but there was no trace of cancer. It was gone. Come on. Praise Jesus. Come on. And so he replaced that with a dream, a burning desire to preach the gospel to the nations. To the point that I would lay down flat on my face for hours and hours and hours and weep over the nations. And say, God, would you please grant me the desire to go to the nations. I would weep hours. One time I prayed for six hours. And my dad was so confused. He's like, what is Alejandro doing inside? He's going to, you know, vanish in that room. So he went inside, he broke into the room, he broke into the sacred room because I, uh, that, was, that was their room, but I turned it into a prayer room. You know what I'm saying? It was their room, it was a master room, but I wanted to pray in the master room for some reason. And this was before I became the boy preacher. I was like really praying and seeking God and this was all preparation. And so I was in there for hours praying, worshiping, listening to... How many of you have heard of Claudio Frazen and Carlos Anaconda and Benny Hinn and, uh, you know, all these amazing generals. I was listening to the worship tapes and hours, spending time in the, in the presence of God and just weeping and, and just crying out for, for more of Him. How many of you know that you can never have enough of God? The moment you say, well, I had enough. I went to a meeting. I had enough. I'm telling you, you're not ready for heaven. Hello? Some of you said amen. Did you know what you just said amen to? I said if you, if you, if you had enough of God, you're not ready for heaven. Hello? Because we will never have enough. Never. Never. 
We always want more and more and more, especially in this pandemic. I feel like some people are starving. They just want encounter after encounter. They just, we, I don't just want encounters. I want, I want to habitate in the presence of God. I want to dwell in the presence of God. Come on. I want to be, you know, you are a revival. You are a manifestation. You are a living, uh, living carrier of the presence of God. You carry the presence of God wherever you go. You ooze. Uh, with the presence of God. Come on. You, you got it in you. You got it in your DNA. Your identity is built around the presence of God. My dad, and I'm just telling you some highlights before I go into the word. He went into the room. He grabbed me. He's like, what are you doing? You don't eat. Because I was fasting all the time. Like I, my teachers thought it was really, really, really concerning that I was fasting a lot, you know. And I was already slim. I was this 11-year-old, skinny, unassuming, shorty, you know, passionate on fire boy for Jesus. You, you understand? So my teachers were really concerned about me because I was fasting too much. And they sent me to see a psychologist. So they wrote a note in my book. They sent me to see a psychologist. Well, that psychologist turned into a divine appointment because I ended up witnessing to the psychologist. Psychologist rang my parents. My parents came and the psychologist said, well, there's nothing wrong with this child. He just has a vocation. He has a calling in his life. And you're going to have to support him. That's all. So my, my parents didn't know what to do with me. You understand? And uh, my dad gave me a bunch of, you know, vitamins the next day. You got to take these vitamins. You're going to be malnourished. No, you know, what's wrong with you? You don't eat. You, you, all you want to do is be in your room praying, in our room praying. I mean, because I was seeking God. And then two weeks later, and this is all preparation time. Two weeks later, I'm given an invitation. Because I already, I was doing a lot of outreach meetings. I was uh, involved with, um, you remember back then, 1999, when Billy Graham was doing the Jesus movie? In a lot of neighborhoods and places and in homes, they were, you know, featuring that. And so I was involved with that in my community and I wanted to give out tracts. And that was my hobby. I loved giving out tracts to people. In fact, I would go to Jesus rallies and I would get lost in the crowd. And they would have to announce through the intercom system, hey, there is a guy, there is a little boy here, nine years old, and he's looking for his parents. Just like, you know, like in the Bible kind of. So my, parents, my mom would be like desperate, like, what have you done, you know? Like, we've been looking for a year. Because I would just get lost. And I'm talking about five, ten thousand 10,000 people in some of these rallies, you know? And I would get lost for hours. I would go missing for hours, just giving out tracts. I was crazy for Jesus. I'm still crazy for Jesus. I'm still a little bit radical, you know? I'm not your average evangelist. I'm, I'm radical for Jesus. Come on. How many of you are radical for Jesus? Raise your hand. Come on. But guess what? God decided to do some amazing things in the process. Some miracles. I led my dad to Jesus when I was 12 years old. My dad didn't know the Lord. And he came to Christ in one of my meetings. He was supporting me. He was traveling with me. Even though every now and then he would like sneak out and smoke a cigarette and drink some. And, uh, you know, he would like try to hide it from the pastors. But the pastors knew what he was doing, you know. And everybody knew that he was not a believer. Yet he was traveling with the boy preacher. And then God used this camp meeting where he was convicted. He fell under conviction. And he came down the aisle trembling and in tears. And that was my dad. He gave his life to Jesus that evening. You know, I have seen a lot. The Lord has allowed me to see many miracles. And we are on the brink of seeing a great move of God. In the remnant. Now let me say that again. The remnant. Not the big churches. Not, the, not your typical church. The remnant. And God is pursuing some hearts. He wants you to ignite your heart with a fresh fire. And so tonight I'm going to talk about the latter glory. Because the former glory is gone. But the latter glory is better. Come on. And he wants to give you that. He wants, to, he wants you to enjoy that. Heaven invading earth. Amen. Father, we just praise you tonight.
I give you praise for all the miracles you're about to do. You know, last weekend in Wisconsin, I, I want to read something of this book. So last weekend in Wisconsin, uh, we had some incredible creative healings. There was a lady who had three fractured um, areas in her spine. She could hardly move. If God touched her and she was able to bend and move and jump for the first time. It was awesome to see that. Then there was another guy who kept praying and asking God. He wanted to kneel down and worship God, but he, there was so much pain on his uh, hips and his uh, knees were in so much pain that he couldn't actually bend and worship God. And so that was his prayer. That was his request. He kept asking God, if, if you're going to show up tonight, knees and I want to worship you. And guess what he did? He got down in his knees and he worshiped God and he was Then there was another lady who couldn't see properly. She had this rare eye condition. Well, God is the God of miracles. COVID will not not stop God and will not stop the miraculous. Come on. COVID has been designed to shut down the church, but yet the remnant is still going and still growing and still moving. God is not giving up on the church. God is not giving God is not giving up on the bride. He loves his bride. He loves his church. He loves his people. Come on. And if you're one of them, say hallelujah. God has not given up on this beautiful dream. He wants to see heaven invading earth. And we are carriers of heaven. Yeah. Strong here. Haggai chapter 2. Verse 2, the Bible talks about Zerubbabel and the son of Shechem, to Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and to all the remnant. Now, that, that word highlighted, the remnant of the people, and say, who is left among you, verse 3, who saw this glory, this house, in its former glory, How do you see it now? Is it not as nothing in your eyes? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord. Work, for I am with you, declares the Lord. They sit down and wait. The Lord says, work. Work, be ready, be proactive, and work. Work. People. He's not going to use people that are sitting around doing nothing. He is going to use people that are passionate. Number one, say with me, passionate. And they're ambitious for the kingdom. Use people that are driven, that are ambitious, and that are passionate. And there's nothing wrong with being ambitious in the kingdom. Very ambitious kid. And then God, you know, went to I went to this Bible school at the age of twelve because I wanted to study the Bible so bad. I knew God was preparing me for ministry, and the minimum age to go into Bible school was eighteen. Yet I prayed for a whole week and I said, I'm going. And my mom said, well, it's for 18 year olds, you know, you got to be 18. There's no way you're going to make it. And yet God spoke to the senior, the, the uh, director of that Bible school. And, that Bi- and, and the guy said, if I don't call you, it's because you have been admitted. If I call you, it's because I have bad news for you. So I kept praying the whole week, Lord, God, please may he not call me. In Jesus name, no call. And the call didn't come through. So I was admitted. But I was like the, the pet of the Bible school. You understand? Because so I was among all of these tall, I mean, incredible, intellectual, highly gifted, you know, 30s and 40s apostles and prophets. And I was the only 12-year-old among this crowd. You, you understand? So they, they couldn't understand. See, you've got to be ambitious in the kingdom. Hello? 
I was a little bit too ambitious. I was a little bit on the, on the high end uh, of ambition. You, you understand? Because I had a calling in my life that was burning, that was consuming me. Nothing, I, nothing stopped me. I just felt like I needed to preach the gospel. And uh, I never saw my age, never saw my height. I just kept on going. My first crusade happened when I was 14 years old. God started using me and opening doors. And I had a, 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 a one crusade in Colombia where, where 20,000 people came to the crusade. And 2,000 people got saved. I mean, we saw the blind see. We saw the deaf hear. We saw people getting out from wheelchairs. We saw amazing things. God is going to use ambitious people. He is going to use highly motiv motivated, highly passionate, highly, you know, people that are ready to catch the harvest. Amen. So Jesus is about to use the remnant. Tell your neighbor, you are part of this remnant. But God says, work. How many of you we have? How many of you know we have an unemployment crisis, and we have a job crisis, and we have, well, it's kind of an unemployment job crisis, and also lack of appetite for work. Hello, it's like everything in one. Hello, right? How many of you know we have that crisis right now? And people want to do well. They want to get out of this pandemic. They want to have uh, money flowing in from everywhere. They just want uh, to come out of this pandemic. Yet there is a crisis and people don't want to work. And God says, work. God says, work, pray. Now many of you are like, well, grace, grace is a gift of God and gift of heaven and, and, and it's not merited. I, I understand it, it is not merited. I understand what you're saying and, and faith is not based on works. However, action is required. Action is required. So when Jesus said, casting it on the other side, you know, the disciples could have said to Jesus, hey, get lost. We know what we're doing. Hello? They could have said, hey, we've been fishing all night long and you are telling us how to do our job. Go ahead and tell the usher that has been in, in the same church for 30 years how to do his job. Hello? Go ahead and tell the deacon how to run the church after doing it for 30 years. And Peter was like, hey, we've been doing this for a long time. Yet Jesus said, cast the net on the other side. Because there was a word. There was a rhema. There was a revelation. There was a manifestation that was locked in. And unless they activated that manifestation through the gift of faith, they would have never seen the harvest. Yet they saw the harvest because they unlocked the supernatural by their faith. Come on. So you got to step out in faith. Number one, work. Tell your neighbor, work. They'll be like, well, what do you mean? I'm working. No, like pray. Like evangelize. Like go out and reach the lost. Come on. Like go out and do something for the kingdom. Build a kingdom. Build a church. Build a kingdom in this hour. Don't just sit around and wait for revival to come. Oh, revival come. Revival come. Yeah, revival will never come if you don't work. Gideon was complaining about the state of affairs. And he was like, what about all the miracles that our forefathers told us? What about all the signs and wonders? What about all the amazing things? You know, he was complaining. And an angel appeared to Gideon. And God saw the strength in Gideon. And even though Gideon was complaining, he's like, what about all the amazing wonders? Because the Midianites were stealing from the Israelites. Every night, they would come and steal. See, how many of you know that we have a crisis right now in our nation where the enemy is stealing from many churches? Come on. How many of you know that we're on the brink of, like, the, the enemy is really trying to, you know, steal the momentum? I mean, he stole the momentum back in 2020. A lot of things were going to happen. They were scheduled they were going to happen in 2020, yet they had to be canceled and postponed because of the pandemic. 
They had a big crusade in Rio where they were going to have one million people marching for Jesus. And they had to postpone that. My friend Vernon Actigal from Germany, who's the president of the Go Movement, he had all these crusades all over the world. He had to postpone them all. Missions was affected. Evangelism was affected. All, all the evangelists around the world had to cancel, postpone most of their speaking engagements. So like the enemy came up with the perfect recipe to shut down the church and slow down the momentum. But the enemy didn't know that there was a remnant within that church that even after the pandemic, they were going to shake off the pandemic and they were going to keep on moving and they were going to keep on dreaming and they were going to keep on praying and they were going to keep on working and they were going to keep on sowing and they were going to keep on doing because they love Jesus because they love the presence because they love the anointing because they love the intimacy they love the intimate place with God come on they don't, they don't just watch church they are the church And they are radical. Come on. Tell your neighbor, I'm one of those. I'm a radical one. Amen. The reason I'm sitting here tonight is because I'm a radical one. Yes. The, the, the reason I'm not watching, I'm, I'm a radical one. I'm here. Yes. I'm not afraid of crowds. I'm not afraid of no virus because I know greater is the one who is in me. Yes. I mean, you have incredible faith to be, to be sitting here. A lot of people are no longer walking this kind of faith. You know that in America, the church has shrunk. I mean, like 30, 40 percent. Many evangelical churches shrunk big time. Big time. And a lot of Lutheran and Methodist and Baptist churches had to be shut down completely. They said, one, one statistic said that one out of four churches wasn't going to make it. One out of four. But this is the time where God says, work for I'm with you. Believe for I'm with you. Roll up your sleeves and believe with me for I am with you, the Lord says. So God is giving you that word today. And, and even though you, you're stuck because of of the decisions you need to make right now. And they are tough. And I don't want to downplay the feelings. I don't want to downplay the, the virus. I don't want to downplay the crisis. We are going through a crisis. The likes we haven't had in more than 100 years. We're going through a crisis. Yet the church back in 1918. Back in 1920. Grew and had revival in the midst of a pandemic. They held crusades. They had, they had open air meetings. They had tent meetings. And the evangelists back then would say, come and bring the sick and bring the ones that have yellow fever and the ones that have all, like, what was the, um, the Spanish flu. Bring the ones that have the Spanish flu. Line them up. I want to pray for them. Back then, those evangelists, they had gods. Come on, bring them. One man, I think one great evangelist said, if, if they bring the virus and put it in the palm of my hand, it will die. John Joe Lake. It will die. That's the kind of faith we need in our day and age. That's the kind of faith we need in the body of Christ. We need faith. We are starving of faith. If we don't get another booster, and I'm not talking about the booster, I'm talking about the real booster. Hello? You know what I'm saying? Some of you are smiling like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I'm talking about the real booster here. I'm talking about the real one. I'm talking about faith and the presence and the power and revival and the Holy Spirit and, and, and an encounter with God. Come on. That's the kind of, you know, the, the Genesis 28 type booster. Come on. I'm talking about the, the on the road to the Damascus experience kind of booster. Come on. I'm talking about the, the Jesus days kind of booster. Come on. The primitive church. The book of Acts. That's what we need right now. And we are desperate to have a, another visitation and another revival. But the, the word, the key word is let's get it done by praying 
But not just praying. But by activating our giftings. Activating the anointing that we already have. And work to save the lost. Because if we don't preach the gospel, nobody else is going to do it. You know, the other day I, I, was, uh, I had a divine appointment uh, on my way from uh, Dubai to Orlando just two weeks ago after coming from Malawi. And I was able to witness to the flight attendant. And I love divine appointments because God, you know, has a, an amazing way of bringing people across our path when they most need it. Amen. And this flight attendant from Cyprus originally, but uh, working in Dubai with a, a wonderful resume experience for many years working with Emirate Airlines. And I mean, uh, I was talking to her and I could sense that she was there. She was ready to receive Jesus. And she was so open to receive him that I actually didn't waste any time and I led her to Christ. Like she was sitting there in tears. She's like, you're making me emotional. I'm like, no, it's the Holy Spirit. And, and, and last week we had another experience at the restaurant. That we led the waiter to the Lord. And we gave a prophetic word. You know, I love when God is, is, is doing these things. I love when, when it's a God, you know, a, a God manifestation. When it is supernatural. When you are led by the Holy Spirit. When you are obedient. So tell your neighbor it's time to step out. Because revival won't come just out of a place of a prayer. Revival will come out of a place of obedience. I want you to write that down. Jesus had to experience that when Mary saw the potential and the anointing and the giftings and the power. And she acknowledged it even before Jesus' time. Now I'm going to wrap this message with this. Mary saw it. Mary then challenged, kind of challenged Jesus or kind of, uh, you know, exposed the ministry before the time. This is amazing. Mary said, we have run out of wine. And this is almost like an Old Testament prophecy being fulfilled in a New Testament setting talking about the New Testament covenant. And those who have ears hear what the Lord is saying. Mary is talking about the wine. Then Jesus immediately, in, he, he translates that as she's talking about the blood and the manifestation of the covenant. And, she, and Jesus said, well, it is not my time to step out and do this miracles. Because Jesus at that point, was in yet commissioned. He was, I mean, no, he wasn't yet launched. He was commissioned, but he wasn't yet launched. And he was about to. You understand? Yet she acknowledged and honored the anointing. And then Jesus turned around and said, amazing stuff. When you read the, 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 the original, like, Jesus didn't say, Mom. Jesus didn't say, Dear Mom. Jesus didn't say, hey, mommy, let's have a chat. Jesus turned around and said, woman. Now, in the 21st century, this would be problematic. And politically incorrect. And I don't think your mom would like to be called like that. I don't think your mom would appreciate you calling her woman. Because the moment you do that, you get a good spank. Hello? Don't disrespect me. Uh, you know, taught you better. Right? But Jesus is stepping out of that realm. This is amazing. He's stepping out of that realm and he is now talking as the Son of God, as God Himself, as the authority of Heaven, the supreme authority of Heaven. And He's basically saying, It is not my time. And so immediately she acknowledges that and she honors the anointing and she says, whatever, whatever he says, do it. Whatever he says, do it. And in that moment, uh, faith comes into action. Come on, somebody. 
And in that moment, the heavens open. And in that moment, that word of faith, that acknowledgement, that word of honor coming from the mother, saying whatever he says, do it. Meaning, whatever he's asking you to do, obey it. And in that moment, heavens opened. In that moment, grace was manifested. In that moment, Jesus stepped out of that time into another time. And he manifested himself as the Son of God by turning the water into wine. By revealing that he was the water of life that was going to be turned into the real covenant. Uh, you know, a few years later by shedding his blood. Come on, somebody. Are, are you getting this? Are you understanding this? Jesus being the water of life and then being turning to the real blood that was going to save humanity from a real catastrophe? Come on. That's why he said it is not my time yet. Jesus was deep. Every conversation. He was charismatic too. He was relational. But he was always doing he was not sitting around waiting for a move of God he was the move of God tell your neighbor you are the move of God tell your neighbor what are you waiting for you are the move of God oh no I'm waiting for a revival you are a move of God I'm waiting for someone to lay hands on me you are the move of God I'm waiting for another prophetic word so I can uh, put it in my prophetic sack. You are the move of God. Some of you, when you get to heaven, you're going to have a sack full of prophetic words. This big. You're going to have to ask some angelic intervention, some angels to come and help you offload it. Because if you don't step and you don't walk and you don't actually do anything with those words, they're just going to be words. But those words are meant to open chapters. They're meant to open cycles. They're meant to open seasons. They're meant to enable you to do the supernatural and the extraordinary. Because God is an extraordinary God. Come on. God is an extraordinary God. God is a supernatural God. God is an amazing God. So he wants to use you and your hands. Carry the miracle working power of Jesus. Say with me, my hands carry the power of God. So it's time for me to work. It is, it is not just time for to pray and, and wait around. It is not just time to, to see what happens or, or to just go through the, through the crisis thinking maybe it'll finish down the road. No, let me tell you, we are living in the end times. And whether you find me a little bit too much or too excitable or too on fire or too Pentecostal, well, let me tell you something. I'm here to wake you up and tell you, you better do what God is calling you to do. Because if you don't do it... Someone else is going to step in and do it. God is about to remove the lampstand of many. And entrusting the anointing to others. But God wants to reconcile the anointing. He wants to reconcile two generations. The baby boomers and the millennials. And if God can bring those two generations together in 2021, we are going to see the greatest revival in history. Come on, how many of you say amen to that? Yes, Lord, do it. Make it happen. Open the heavens. Let it rain. We want to see it again. Come on, church. Are you ready for the next great outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Are you ready for the next revival? It's not going to be another Brownsville or another Pensacola or another Lakeline. It's going to be bigger than that. It's going to be a global revival. It's going to be a faceless and nameless revival. That's why God is raising up evangelists everywhere, not just in one location or one ministry. No, this is not about one ministry. This is about the glory of God carrying the Ark of the Covenant and taking it from one place to another place. This is about your miracle, your breakthrough, but about His glory. So if you're ready to receive tonight, you know, this is the amazing grace of God. Gideon's complaining and, and God then comes and says, hey, snap out of it. With that strength. This is amazing. 
with that strength, go and save my people. Yet he's complaining. He's telling God, I'm the youngest. I'm the, the, the weakest. I'm this, I'm that. I'm living in, the, in, the, in a time of famine. You don't understand God. We're going through COVID-19. You don't understand God. I'm about to be fired because I don't want to make a decision. You don't understand God. I don't know if I should compromise my conviction. You don't understand God. I'm going through a difficult time. I'm about to let go of my financial security. You don't understand God. I don't know what I'm doing. There are times when I'm laying in bed and I have no idea how I'm going to make it tomorrow. You don't understand God. I'm living through a pandemic. And Jesus says, with thy strength of yours, go and save the people of New England. Oh, come on, somebody. With that strength of yours, go and reach the lost. And you're like, well, what strength? Because God is looking at your inner man. So begin to pray, begin to pray and ask the Lord, use me, God. I'm ready. I know many of you came for a breakthrough and you're about to receive it. I'm going to pray for you and we're going to pray for healings and miracles. God is already giving me words for some of you. So why don't you just begin to pray and ask the Lord. God, use me. God, I'm willing. God, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I am here to, to serve you. I'm here to build your kingdom. I'm going to call the worship team to come forward. God, I just pray that you will use me. Come on. Use me as an instrument, God. Use me for your glory, God. Use me for your glory, God. Jesus, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. From you are all things. To you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Yes, For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Shendra bakatara mandoro boshen. For from you are all things. Thank you, Father. And to you are all things. Thank you, Jesus. You deserve the glory. Now let's just begin to worship, begin to worship. Send that amandro ro ro, get that amandro ro. Get amandro ro, bo send that amandro ro. Now raise your hands, just raise your hands. And pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. Get amasso ro mo ya se.
presence of God is falling upon you. The power of God is falling upon you. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is falling on you. The fire of God is falling on you. The glory, the presence, the anointing is falling on you. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now there's a real, real anointing in here. Oh, and I. To pray for the power of God to fall upon those those who are ready to catch the fire so if you are one of those and you are ready to catch the fire you are ready to catch the fire would you please and I'm going to ask those of those who are in the first three or four rows. If you are ready to catch the fire, come forward. Come forward. If you are ready to catch the fire, come forward. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to ask ushers to be ready at all times. Because this is going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Why don't you raise your hands and pray in the Spirit. Why don't you raise your hands and pray in the Spirit. your hands and begin to pray in the spirit ushers be ready be ready be ready be ready be ready ushers ushers be ready ushers ushers be ready The Lord says, I have anointed you as an evangelist, and you will go to the broken and the wounded, and you will heal them all, and you will restore them all. I have given you the calling of Nehemiah. The Lord says, for I'm standing by your side, and I have given you power and authority to do mighty things. This is just the beginning of what I'm about. 
about to do in your life. I rescued you from brokenness. I rescued you from brokenness. You were a very broken man, but I spared your life. There were times where the enemy tried to kill you, but I had you in the palm of my hands, and I never let you go. Never let you go, because I have a purpose and a destiny for your life, says the Lord. You are an anointed, anointed prayer warrior. And there have been times where you have felt like there is a shift coming. But there is like a wind that is pushing it in the other direction. But God says, the wind that is favorable to you and the wind that is going to lead you in the right direction is coming and is blowing now. God says, but I have anointed you and I have baptized you with the fire to pray, pray, pray and build because great things are going to happen when you build in the spirit and when you build in the spirit through your prayer and through the laboring in the spirit fire come on pray the spirit and you are worthy you've been going through some difficult times but I see the hand of the Lord raising his hand over you and I see the Lord promoting you and I see the Lord intervening and I see the Lord opening a new chapter and I see the Lord closing the old chapter and the old chapter was filled with struggle and, 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 and difficult waiting but now the Lord is about to release you and he's about to lead you to a land of green pastures and God says don't be afraid that I'm standing by your side I have anointed you and baptized you with my fire oh, oh, shifting some things in your life there is a new wine and there is a new oil and there is a new season and there is a new time and God is accelerating those things and God is about to release you God is about to release you there is a season of release in your life those things that were holding back are going to be released and God says don't be afraid for you are about to step into a new season into a new season of miracles, signs, and wonders. Fire. Whoa. Fire. Fire. Chandra Come on, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. I see the Lord moving things. I see the Lord moving his finger. And I see the Lord going through your book. And I see the Lord writing the words. More is coming. More grace. More expansion. More blessing. More breakthrough. I see a season that you're stepping into. Where God is going to use you as you pray and as you declare and as you prophesy. You are a prophetic voice in this land. And when you release that sound, the enemy has tried to muffle you. Listen, the enemy has try to muffle you the enemy has tried to silence that sound but you are a sound that is going to bring life and it's going to resurrect the dry bones you have an anointing in the ministry of deliverance God is going to use you to send the captives free you have an anointing like Deborah you will go up the mountain and you will blow the shofar and many will be set free through the anointing that God has given you fire fire you are 
experiencing some changes and they are good changes but God is leading you in a journey a journey that is unknown to you right now a journey that is requiring you to let go of some friendships a journey that is requiring you to close some chapters and close some alliances the Lord says I'm leading you to make new alliances and to make new partnerships because I'm about to bless you in the land of the unknown in the place of the unknown I'm about to bless you and I see the mantle of many colors upon your shoulders I see the anointing of Joseph I see the anointing of Joseph I see the anointing of Joseph and I see that you are going places and God is gonna bless you and he's gonna bless the integrity of your heart but he is removing some people that are not meant to be in your circle he is doing it for your sake because he loves you and he cares for you and this is a time of cleansing and the time of removing and the time of, 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 of bringing you to a level of readiness where you haven't been before fire fire come on pray in the spirit pray in the spirit I see the Lord is splitting the Red Sea. I see the Lord bringing you to a place where you are about to see some real miracles. You have been praying. There is something in your prayer jar. And I, I, I call it a jar because I can see it in the spirit. There is a jar where you have been putting your prayer requests. And you, you have been praying. And you've been waiting on God. And I see the angel of the Lord opening that jar. And I see the angel of the Lord breathing on it. And I see the angel of the Lord saying it is done my daughter it is done it is done it is done Shendra recently you went through a moment of despair you went through a, 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 a moment of loss losses losses that's what I'm hearing in the spirit you went through a very difficult time and you felt like you, you lost some precious things and some precious you've lost some friends people some something valuable but i see the lord restoring the joy even when you have lost the lord is restoring the joy you've been living in sorrow You've been walking in sorrow. You've been walking in sorrow. And you've been walking in grief. And you've been grieving and grieving. But God says, the time to rejoice has come now. For I am removing the sorrow. And I'm giving you the joy back. I'm restoring the joy back in your heart. For I am with you, says the Lord. For I am with you and i know what you have been through i know that it's been difficult i know that it's been it's been bad but i'm sustaining you with my right hand and i'm not letting you go you are worthy am i praying the spirit Lord Jesus, touch this land in the name of Jesus. Your word says that we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. So in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for life. And I pray that all the pain will go away in the name of Jesus. Fire. 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 Shandra 
I see an open heaven and I see the Lord handing you a set of keys and the Lord says don't be afraid don't hold back but receive your blessing that what is meant to be yours no one is going to steal it no one is going to take it away for it is your blessing it is your blessing and I see the Lord signing on it and I see the Lord giving you release and I see the Lord opening a door a door that no man can shut fire for you are a fire carrier and in your community you shall be known as someone with a big heart you love to serve and help people you love to build the kingdom and you love to do so much more for the kingdom you are a community minded you are a community minded person God has given you a big heart for your community and the time is now and you are touch your Holy Spirit fire fire your word says lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed so in the mighty name of Jesus pray for every bone every muscle every tendon to resurrect to come back to life in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Her head, her hip, her whole body, let her be baptized with fire, fire. Come on, pray, pray, pray in the spirit. The Lord says this is a time of new opportunities. The Lord says this is a time of new favor. This is a time of I'm, I'm leading you to new places and new assignments. God says new assignments, new assignments. And I'm leading you in this journey and I'm giving you fresh fire, fresh fire. And you're going to be a fire carrier and you're going to carry that fire in many places places that are dark and oppressed places that need the fire of god you got it in you you got it in you you got it in you touch your holy spirit Chandra, ba, 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 ba. come on pray in the spirit and you are Lord, I pray that you will touch and heal and restore and, and Lord, remove all the pain in the name of Jesus. You are a fire carrier. You are a catalyst. You are a rocket in the spirit. And God has been preparing you for this hour and for this time. You are not just in the, in the spirit. I see you as an athlete in the kingdom. You are an athlete in the kingdom. 
and there is an athletic force and there's an athletic anointing upon you to build the kingdom in this hour you are not just uh, someone who is passionate and highly driven but you will coach another generation to step up and take on the mandate and take on the anointing that I have given you the Lord says for I have anointed you for this hour to make a difference to be a lighthouse in this community they shall see my head upon you they shall see my head upon you for I am doing you miracles signs and wonders do you fire oh <laughs> fire all over her fire fire says you will slay giants down I'm giving you an anointing to slay giants down you don't believe sometimes that the calling is there you've tried to run from that calling but I keep finding you and I keep bringing you back to the place of your calling for you are anointed for this hour and you will raise a new generation of a young man that will pursue me that you will be like a mirror and the Lord says many will look through you and they will see my glory in you this is a new season where I'm setting you aside for this new assignment and this new calling that I'm giving you for you are a man who is going to walk in the great anointing the new wine and great authority and the Lord says that and he sets you aside for such a purpose touch him Holy Spirit come on pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit The season of waiting is over, but the season of going ahead and taking over, the season of embracing the promise, the season that you've been waiting for too long is coming. I see that the Lord is removing a mantle, but He is giving you a new mantle. That mantle was worn out. It's been through a lot of battles. It's been through a lot of difficult times and had deep, deep uh, signs of uh, wearing and tear. But God is giving you a new mantle. And that mantle is shiny and is glorious. And that mantle is going to carry you in this new season. For you are a woman of faith, the Lord says. You are a giant of faith. You pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. The Lord says, I want you to know 
that your faith has moved mountains and I want you to know that I have seen you in your moments that are very troublesome and that, I, that, that, that I've seen you in those moments where you have uh, cried out to me in those moments of desperation and my angels have stood beside you the Lord says my angels have stood there by your side and I have not left you even though the enemy at times says look you're being you're praying you have been praying but nothing is coming to pass and God says it's about to happen it's about to happen I sense that there is a shift there is a change of direction and there's a change of wind where the Lord is taking you and leading you come on pray in the spirit of fire touch your Holy Spirit I want you to pray this is what you're going to do I want you to lay hands on your body and I want you to pray in the spirit if you need healing in your body whether that's sickness or a viral thing or a bacteria or maybe you have issues with your eyes Maybe you have issues with uh, your heart. Maybe you have issues with your lungs. I want to pray for you now. Father, I release healing. Healing is the bread of your children, God. I release healing in this house. And I pray that everyone will receive a touch from heaven now. Shendra ma katoro ma shendra ma soro mo shendra ma. Oh, sure, I'm gonna be very quick, so you better catch up. Shendra ma katara ma ndoro bo shendere re katara ma ndoro bo shendere. Let the fire of God rest upon them now. Holy Spirit, fill him up. Touch your Holy Spirit and use her for evangelism, for massive outreach. Lord, I just pray. God upon this man. Touch him, Holy Spirit. Give him more. Fire, fire, fire. Chandra, ba 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 fire. Oh! You're like Caleb. The Lord says, I'm giving you the anointing of Caleb. You don't see the problems. You don't see the obstacles. You just go and you scout the land. And you see the promises and the blessings. So don't be afraid and don't hold back. But walk in that calling of yours. Father, I release healing. I release healing, Lord. I pray that every spine be healed in the name of Jesus. I pray that everyone with a lump, God, I pray that those lumps will disappear in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, for those who have hernias. I pray that those hernias will be eradicated. 
eradicated in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for those who have tumors and those who have cancer in the name of Jesus. Heal them all in the power of the Spirit. I pray for those who have issues with their hearing. Heal them in the name of Jesus. Come on, lay hands on your body. Lay hands on your body and receive healing. Receive healing. Receive healing. Receive healing. And day and night, night and day. Yes! Open the eyes of your people, open the ears of your people, heal the spines, heal the broken areas, Lord. You are where incense Spirit of God, touch, 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 touch. Fire, Sandra, touch, touch. Issues with your spine. Sorry. Issues with your spine. How long? Long time. What were you not able to do? Painful. All the time. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that her spine will be healed now and all the pain will be gone. Your word says that. We will lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. Touch your toes. Do it again. Is there any pain? From one to ten, how bad is it? Huh? Less. From one to ten, how bad is it? Three. Lord, your word says that we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. So in the name of Jesus, I take authority over this pain and I command it to go now. Do it again. Do it again. You're fine? You're okay? You're healed? What's going on there? It's loosening. It's loosening. Touch your Holy Spirit. Fire! Whoa! Shandra Makato This is what I want you to do now. The Word of God says a faith without words is dead. So we need to activate our healing and our miracle. And in order to activate it, we got to do something that we weren't able to do before. Remember, we're going to have three or two more services on Sunday. And revival is here to stay. Father, I thank you for this fire that you have brought upon your people, Lord. So do something you couldn't do now. Do it. Do it. Come on. 
lift your hand bow bend over flex your knees oh worthy 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 the lady in the wheelchair come 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 walk Walk. Walk. Lord, I pray for her hip. How's your hip feeling? It's what? It's good? No pain? Tiny bit. So it's disappearing. Yes, it is. It's like Jesus injecting that area and the, 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 the medicine is working its way through. So come on, just walk, just walk. Shandling day and night, night and day. Father, we just thank you for that hip. We release healing over that hip. In Jesus' name. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. It's good? Better? You couldn't do that? Not without a walker. You needed a walker. So Jesus is restoring the mobility and the strength back in your legs. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand. Back in your feet. Hallelujah. What about your hand? What about your hand? Good? No pain? No pain? Give God the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone here who is able to move a band and do something you weren't able to do before and you have no pain and Jesus is healing you or you are experiencing improvement, please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. Wow. Wow. Come over here. Those who have your hands up. Come, 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 come. Come, come, come. Jesus, Jesus. What happened to you, brother? My neck. What happened to your neck? It's, I can move it. You can move it? Yeah. For how long were you dealing with a stiff neck? Appointment to, to, to see if it's going to be fused or not. And... Uh... You have an appointment to see if it was going to be fused. And now? I don't think I need to have it fused. You don't need to have it fused. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand. Move it. Move it. No pain. Wow. Praise God, brother. What happened to you? Uh, we got in a, a T-bone accident. Car accident. You had a car accident. How long ago? February of uh, 2020 and uh, had nerve damage. You had nerve damage? And it's starting to, I can feel it shifting. You feel it shifting? Yep. Praise God. What were you not able to do before? I was getting tingle, you know, my feet felt tingly and just losing some function in half. I do something you couldn't do. Yeah, I mean, I'd just that have been able to tilt to the side. I couldn't do that. It was do that? Nope. Yeah. Nerve damage, and now you're you, that something is happening there, yeah. and it's shifting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah! Praise you, Jesus! Praise you, Jesus! Were you able to run? Were you able to run? Go. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Run, run, run. Yay, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just thank you, Father. What's going on? I can move my toes. <laughs> I could not move them. I had surgery a month ago. They were stiff. I'm moving. You're moving your toes? 
moving my toes. I can't see them, but you you are moving them. I can feel my toes. You can feel <laughs> your toes. Feel my toes, and the circulation and the tingling is gone, and it's just like. Like I can move my toes. <laughs> Praise God! Praise God for that! Hallelujah! So you will be able to remove that brace very soon and walk, no crutches. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! What happened to you? Well, I needed this hip replaced, and I felt God make it longer because it was shorter, because it was worn down, and I felt it just. Hallelujah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You had a shorter leg than the other one? Yeah, because this needs to be replaced. Was. It did need to be replaced, yeah. but not anymore. So you felt like God just yeah. brought the leg out, like yeah. the hip, like shifted it? Yeah. I felt. Now? It's great. No pain? No pain. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand. Praise God. What happened to you? Well, um. I had COVID in June, and I've been experiencing tremendous after COVID issues, including dizziness, and as if my head was floating and not connected. It's very strange, and it's been very hard. And right now, I don't feel that. Anymore. Hallelujah. You notice when I came up to you, I grabbed your hand because I lost my balance and walking. So I was like, oh my God, better hold on him before I fall down. So I want to praise God for that. Right now I'm feeling much more painful. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know that Jesus can heal COVID symptoms. Yes, that's right. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand. Jesus can heal COVID symptoms. Come on, give God the glory. 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 Give Jesus the glory. Give Jesus the glory. Give Jesus the glory. Hallelujah. Well, if you can find your uh, way back to your seat, we want to bless the Lord tonight. We want to bless our guest God has brought here. And for some of you, this is probably the first evangelist you've ever seen. There are a lot of people, they call them evangelists, but evangelists move in the power gifts. And I'm, I'm saying this not to lift anybody up, but to frame in what God wants to do for you and maybe someone you know. And you'll notice that we had to help sustain the anointing. Our praying in the Spirit, singing in the Spirit, really focusing on God you see this building is not God's house we are God's house and if we want God's house to be filled then we have to fill it and that's why praying in the spirit singing in the spirit is so important to what God wants to do we can't just look at the evangelist and think it's all going to happen look at someone and tell them we're in this together this is a ministry of the body of Christ where the Holy Spirit's moving through his body. And that's why it's important to be here. You know, that doesn't happen watching online. It's good for people to see online that can't be here. But if you can be here, then you can contribute to what's happening. One puts a thousand to flight, two puts 10,000 to flight. We are gonna see more healings, more power gifts in operation. Can you hear a good amen? How many are gonna be here on Sunday? On both services, we're going to have him here for both. So let's um, ask God to lead us in our giving. If you need an offering envelope, if you raise your hand, the ushers will bring you one. And I'll encourage you to, where it says guest, just put, check that off and give, be generous to our guests so that we can have them back again. How many of you like to have them back again? Yeah. Um, Denise and I were talking but while this is going on. You know, we need to have them back for like three or four nights in a row. Yes. And then Sunday too. Because that's that kind of gifting. And those three or four nights may be in other locations to besides this one. So we want God to, to move in a mighty way. we got to be willing to move with him. How many would be willing to go even to other places in our region here to, to be a part of what God's doing 
in, in an awakening. I think it's important. Now let's pray and ask God to lead us in our giving. Father, we thank you for the gift that you've sent to be with us tonight. We know that we are receiving something that started when he was eight years old. And we are recipients because other people have supported his ministry. And Lord, we want to be some of those other people that when he leaves here and he goes somewhere else, he has the resources to do that and to provide for his family. And we pray that you would just bless this offering and let it be an expression of our gratitude for what you're doing in our midst. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said, amen. Amen. Wow. Let's just thank the Lord one more time. Amen. Father God, we thank yeah, if you, you're on, Father. If you're online, you can also you. give on our app. Yes. And, you, and they're going to show the video to show you how to do it. And then you can make the closing announcement. Okie okay, doke. Okay. As we transition to the next part of our service and prepare to receive tithes and offerings, we want you to be aware of a few things. If you're here in the sanctuary and need an offering envelope, raise your hand right now and the ushers will bring one over to you. Here are the other ways that you can give to help fuel the mission here at Christian Life Church. You can give on the app by going to the More tab and then select Give. Or you can give on our website at citlchurches.org slash donation. You can also give by texting Give CLC to 188-364-GIVE. That is 4483. You can also send a check by mail to the address on the screen. Thank you for making a difference with your generous gifts to the Lord. Amen. Well, before I begin my uh, closing announcements, let's just thank um, evangelist Alejandro. And I'm going to just invite him up. He's got some material. Yes, uh, before I forget, I have uh, just one sample of my wife's book to show you. Uh, the, the book is Revelation Ready. It's about the end times, what we are seeing now, everything that's unfolding. Uh, this is an amazing, um, it's like, it, it's, it's a lot of research, a lot of uh, revelation, a, a lot of stuff that she put together in two years. Now, she's a school teacher, so she went really, really deep. And you will really like this book, and so you will be blessed by it, but I don't have hard copies, so you're going to have to go to my website and place an order. Uh, I'm going to show you a QR code on Sunday. We got a few things to show you on Sunday, but tonight, if you want to go ahead and place the order, just go to my website. It's just my name, AlejandroArias.org. You go and you click on the, you go to the uh, shopping area and you will see my book, Boy Preachers. If you want to hear my story, read my story more in detail, it's available as an audio book, sorry, as an e-book and it's also available as a hard copy so we can mail it to your house. And we have these evangelistic t-shirts. How many of you love to evangelize in your neighborhood? So it has the lyrics, you know, uh, it's got a portion of that song, My God, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper. And then it has a Bible verse, and it's got a ministry there, so you can pray for us and support us. So we have a few of these in the back for $20. Uh, they, they, I have a few sizes, but only in gray. Now, if you want pink, blue, black, or any other color, you got to go to our website. <laughs> Because we only have gray tonight. I was completely sold out in Wisconsin, so, uh, and I didn't have time to get more for you guys here. But you can go to our website, and we will definitely ship those to you next week. We love you in Christ, and we hope to see you here. Nick, tell your neighbor, Sunday, we got another encounter with God, another appointment. Amen. So how many of you are coming on Sunday with that expectation? Come on. I mean, even though we got two services, but I'm going to be praying for the sick, and we're going to do the same. We're going to have a revival. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So let's uh, pick up where we left off. Thank you, Father God, for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you are faithful. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are so good.
so good in every way. Well, before we sign off of LimeStream, I just want to remind you that you can take advantage of the Right Now Media, which is over 20,000 um, Bible videos and those kinds of things. All you need to do is text CLC at 49775. And it is free for you. Not for my husband, but for you it's free. <laughs> uh, we'd also like to remind you of upcoming events, which can be found on the church app under the events tab, or you can go to the website, which is citlchurches.org, um, or you can check your email for the weekly newsletter. Uh, we also want to highlight a couple of events that are coming. Uh, uh, as he said, we'll have him back on Sunday, as well as Andre Bronkhorst will be here October 22nd through the 24th. So he is a very powerful prophet, and uh, you will be blessed by those services. He'll be here again on uh, downpour as well as the Sunday services. Um, if you are a lady or woman, I don't consider myself a lady, so <laughs> uh, anyway, you can come uh, to a fall uh, it's the skillet toss on October 16th, Saturday. So I believe that's next Saturday. You can sign up for that. We also have October blast, which is a very big, um, a blessing to our community. So please bring in candy, feed those red and yellow, uh, barrels out in the lobby and sign up. Also, you can sign up to, uh, treat your trunk so that kids can come and decorate. So trunk or treat. All right. So. I want to thank you for being with us this evening. It was powerful. It was mighty. Do not believe the lie of the enemy that this was just for tonight. Amen. But stand in faith. Activate. Be that worker that he talked about tonight. Amen. Amen. So to our live stream audience, we say we love you. Get your butt here. Amen. <laughs> hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning into Church Online today. You can catch the playback of this entire broadcast later today on Facebook or YouTube. Or if you want to download the entire message, then on Tuesday, you can get it on our church app found as Christian Life Church Maine in your app store. Our church app also holds so much more information, so take the time to look through the many tabs. I especially want to encourage you to search out the event tab and learn about our upcoming events. We want you to know that you're important to us and that you matter to us, and we want to stay connected to you. So if you have a prayer request or if you want someone to reach out to you, if you or if you just need some information, or you would like to join one of our many Get Connected groups throughout the week, then send us an email at info at citlchurches.com, and we'll be happy to get the information out to you. Now we want to remind you, that you're never isolated or cut off from the love of God or from His power and protection. We've been hearing so many wonderful reports from people who've come back to church to a live service, and we hope you'll consider joining us again soon. Please know we're continuing to take extra precautions to keep the building clean and to keep it safe. In closing, I want to release God's blessing and protection to overshadow you and keep you in this coming week. And we'll see you next week.